Calciphylaxis, Wikipedia article audio. Calciphylaxis, or calcific uremic arteriolopathy, is a syndrome of calcification of the blood vessels, blood clots, and skin necrosis. It is seen mostly in patients with stage 5 chronic kidney disease, but can occur in the absence of kidney failure. It results in chronic non-healing wounds and is usually fatal. Calciphylaxis is a rare but serious disease, believed to affect 1-4% to of all dialysis patients. Calciphylaxis is one type of extraskeletal calcification. Similar extraskeletal calcifications are observed in some patients with hypercalcemic states, including patients with milk alkali syndrome, sarcoidosis, primary hyperparathyroidism, and hypervitaminosis D. Signs and Symptoms Heart of Stone The first skin changes in calciphylaxis lesions are mottling of the skin and induration in a levito reticularis pattern. As tissue thrombosis and infarction occurs, a black, Leathery eschar in an ulcer with adherent black slough are found. Surrounding the ulcers is usually a plate-like area of indurated skin. These lesions are always extremely painful and most often occur on the lower extremities, abdomen, buttocks, and penis. Because the tissue has infarcted, wound healing seldom occurs, and ulcers are more likely to become secondarily infected. Many cases of calciphylaxis end with systemic bacterial infection and death. Calciphylaxis is characterized by the following histologic findings. Severe forms of calciphylaxis may cause diastolic heart failure from cardiac calcification, called heart of stone. The cause of calciphylaxis is unknown. It does not seem to be an immune type reaction. In other words, calciphylaxis is not a hypersensitivity reaction leading to sudden local calcification. Clearly, additional factors are involved in calciphylaxis. It is also known as calcific uremic arteriolopathy, however, the disease is not limited to patients with kidney failure. The current belief is that an end-stage kidney disease, abnormal calcium, and phosphate homeostasis result in the deposition of calcium in the vessels, also known as metastatic calcification. Once the calcium has been deposited, a thrombotic event occurs within the lumen of these vessels, resulting in tissue infarction. It is unknown what the triggers are that cause the thrombotic and ischemic event. Reported risk factors include female sex, obesity, elevated calcium asterisk phosphate product, medications such as warfarin, vitamin D derivatives e.g. calcitriol, calcium-based binders, or systemic steroids, protein C or S deficiency, low blood albumin levels, and diabetes mellitus. There is no diagnostic test for calciphylaxis. The diagnosis is a clinical one. The characteristic lesions are the ischemic skin lesions. The necrotic skin lesions typically appear as violaceous lesions and slash or completely black leathery lesions. They can be extensive. The suspected diagnosis can be supported by a skin biopsy. It shows arterial calcification and occlusion in the absence of vasculitis. Sometimes the bone scintigraphy can show increased tracer accumulation in the soft tissues. In certain patients, antinuclear antibody may play a role. Cause The optimal treatment is prevention. Rigorous and continuous control of phosphate and calcium balance most probably will avoid the metabolic changes which may lead to calciphylaxis. There is no specific treatment. Of the treatments that exist, none are internationally recognized as the standard of care. 
An acceptable treatment could include Diagnosis Unfortunately, response to treatment is not guaranteed. Also, the necrotic skin areas may get infected, and this then may lead to sepsis in some patients. Overall, the clinical prognosis remains poor. Calciphylaxis most commonly occurs in patients with end-stage renal disease who are on hemodialysis or who have recently received a renal transplant. Yet calciphylaxis does not occur only in end-stage renal disease patients. When reported in patients without end-stage renal disease, it is called nonuremic calciphylaxis by Nigwikar ETL. Nonuremic calciphylaxis has been observed in patients with primary hyperparathyroidism, breast cancer, liver cirrhosis, cholangiocarcinoma, Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and systemic lupus erythematosus. Treatment Prognosis Epidemiology External reading Dialysis Intensive wound care, clot dissolving agents, hyperbaric oxygen, maggot larval debridement, adequate pain control, correction of the underlying plasma calcium and phosphorus abnormalities, sodium thiosulfate, avoiding local tissue trauma, urgent parathyroidectomy. The efficacy of this measure remains uncertain although calciphylaxis is associated with frank hyperparathyroidism. Urgent parathyroidectomy may benefit those patients who have uncontrollable plasma calcium and phosphorus concentrations despite dialysis. Also, senacalcid can be used and may serve as an alternative to parathyroidectomy. Patients who receive kidney transplants also receive immunosuppression. Considering lowering the dose of or discontinuing the use of immunosuppressive drugs in people who have received kidney transplants and continue to have persistent or progressive calciphylactic skin lesions can contribute to an acceptable treatment of calciphylaxis. A group has reported plasma exchange effective and propose a serum marker and perhaps mediator.